my name's Louis Palou, and the title of my portrait's Night Raid. Yeah, uh, I was in Kandahar in 2010 with the 101st Airborne as a photographer, and I was covering medevac. And uh, I wanted to cover a unit that wasn't shooting at people. I wanted to cover uh, US troops that were doing something else. So I went out with medics, and uh, we were near where Mullah Omar started the Taliban. It wasn't far where 9-11 was planned, and I felt like uh, we need to come to terms with this, this period in this country's history that has been so tumultuous, so dividing. And so I went out with people who weren't shooting at people, and uh, we got, the medevac got a call that night. And I wasn't going out to take photographs. I really felt like if I was going to build a bond with this, this crew, this unit, that I would go out on every mission they would go out. And it's nighttime, of course, there's no light. And uh, we went out, there was a call. And as we were coming into the, uh, the landing zone, the LZ, the, the insurgents had put a bomb on the landing zone. And as we came in, before we landed, they thought we were landed and they blew the bomb up and it sent the helicopter, like a Blackhawks flying around. And uh, it broke the night vision off the medic's helmet. And so the medic could see, once he brought the casualty into the helicopter, this emergency blue light went on, and I sit in the helicopter at the back. The casualty's right in front of me. The medic is there, and the crew chief's there, and the pilots are up front. And I just thought, I can take pictures. But this casualty was staring at me, and he, he, he could just see a person. He didn't know I was taking photographs. And so I took a few photographs. It was just a few moments. And then the lights went off, and we flew to Canada Airfield and dropped him off in the hospital. And, he seemed to have survived. His uh, uh, comrade was killed in front of him who stepped on the, the, the IED, the infrared explosive device. And uh, I think when I did the first edit, I looked at it and I thought, it's out of focus or it's not quite right. Or it was such an odd picture, I didn't give it, I didn't send it in to anyone. I didn't give it to my agency. So for a few months it kind of sat there and I kept looking at it. And uh, about three months later I kind of made a print and I looked at it. And that guy started showing around. Then it, it kind of made sense. It was just so different. I had never shot anything like that before. Where is that light source? Oh, the blue light is uh, in the back of the medevac helicopter. When, there's, when all lights are broken, a blue light turns on. So if we would have crashed, because the helicopter was under attack when I'm taking the picture. This is the, the insane part of the photo. It's quiet. It just sits on the wall as a print, as an object. But uh, there is a blue light in the back of the Black Hawk that turns on. And it's very difficult to see from the ground so that if there's anyone on the ground trying to shoot at you, it's very hard to see it. So the blue light is a built-in light in the helicopter. I come from an art background, actually. I, I was a painter. And uh, I think the big connection for me became is my parents are Italian immigrants, very poor, born before the Second World War. So it was ingrained in my mind that struggle and conflict are a part of who you are. So it's something that I always wanted to explore. I also was very fascinated, you know, just to understand where people like me come from. Uh, Alexander Gardner, the U.S. Civil War is, is for portraiture and photography in the United States and it's in history and looking back at uh, a, a tradition where America is not afraid to look at its most, of course, beautiful moments and its most ugly moments. And it's, it's the seminal moment where Alexander Gardner goes to Antietam and photographs the dead and they're exhibited in, in New York. And the New York Times, here's a funny part writes about it. They weren't published as press photos, writes about an exhibition. And I think that that changes photography and how Americans interact with, with images of conflict and the war dead. And then, I mean, the archive of portraits of U.S. soldiers in the, in the Civil War was huge. So there's that. And then say like David Douglas Duncan, who photographed the Korean War. And uh, I think what it provides is this uh, base, this fundamental base with which uh, we're not afraid to look at ourselves where it's beautiful or ugly, kind of like Abraham Lincoln talking about the better angels of our nature, and or Joseph Conrad and sort of the heart of darkness and not being afraid to turn those pages and look down that river and see that dark side of who we are. <laughs>